we're going to be using a scepter gold tube brush. I always begin my backgrounds first. I'm just going to be laying in some color. That was burnt sienna and I'm going to be mixing up a little bit of uh, Windsor yellow. So this is a great brush for doing large paintings. Be dropping in a little bit of opera rose here. Careful to uh, save my lights. Going back to my burnt sienna. Uh, there are not a lot of hard edges with portraiture, especially in the beginning. They're usually saved till the end when you are working on the details. Windsor blue-green shade and Windsor yellow. Drop in some red, some opera rose. There's a little red down in this corner. And at the bottom, there's a little bit more uh, green. Ooh, now there's more green on this side. <laughs> so I'll just use that. Finish up on this side with a little bit of Windsor blue. Using my cobalt blue and opera. This is a great brush for laying in big washes, but I need to switch to um, my Legend. This is a number six, and I painted almost up to his face, but I left a little space there, and with a little water, I can just drag in the color, and I won't have a hard edge there. Now that I have my background in, I need to stop and dry it and then we'll come back and we'll add the first wash the first value of skin tone switch to a silver black velvet and windsor yellow and i'm going to come over this whole side of the face and i'm starting this right side here i'm going to concentrate on the face first i don't want to get into the neck yet because it'll start drying on me and i won't be able to drop in my blue we're going to go ahead now with opera rose and add that right on top of the windsor yellow wet into wet and i need to go ahead and drop in my blues and i believe i'm going to be using cobalt turquoise light and I'm looking for blue and putting it in where I can and I'm going to switch to a smaller brush and add a little blue for the hair. So I'm going to be using uh, cobalt turquoise light and the object is to get rid of as much white as you can as quickly as possible. I paint by layering and um, I have to let each layer dry. So I'm gonna stop here, blow it dry, and then we'll come back for our second layer of skin tones. Windsor Yellow and Opera Rose. Painting in the shadow area, this side of the face. If I were to just put a dark in, it would not read as well. My shadow will be a purple, and I'm using a half inch flat, and I'm just softening my edges. I like to link shapes together as much as I can, so I'm still using my Windsor Yellow and Opera Rose. I'm going to move into a, uh, a number 10 Legend. Uh, I have the set. I have the uh, 2 through 16 actually and um, these are great brushes I've been using them for a very long time um, I've tried other brushes and I always go back to these uh, they're just a great brush and uh, they just work really well when uh, you're doing portraits and for um, any other type of painting. Trying to avoid the glasses where they're lighter. There are areas where they're light and there are areas where they're dark and they're lost areas. So you wanna pay attention to what type of edge you have. Um, they're not the same all the way around. So I think it's nice when you can have a lost edge, a found edge, 
and uh, have a variation that makes for a nice painting. So we're going to stop here and we're going to dry it. I'm looking and we're kind of in middle value. Add in my crevice flesh colors. I use the same colors that I've been using all along, but I'm going to use them with very little water and they will go in the darkest dark areas. The corners of the mouth, most of the time I use French Ultramarine and Alizarin Crimson. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and with my number six legend, I'm going to mix up some Windsor Yellow. Normally on a smaller painting, I would be using a number two, but this is a much larger painting. It's a full sheet. Another thing about laying in the crevice flesh, when you put it in a little bit drier, it stays where it's supposed to stay when you soften it. It has to be wet enough that you can pull it into other sections. It needs to be dry enough that it's going to stay where you put it. This is also helping me define some of the details that are easily lost if you don't get them in early on. So you need to look for your edges and what they do. If they're lost, that's kind of a lost edge. So it makes for a nice painting to have variation of edges. This also just gives you some direction. Now to soften a, a small area like that, I can get up on the tip of my brush and add a little water and it'll allow that to stay right where I want it. I'm not encouraging it to move out by applying a lot of water around it. I'm encouraging it to stay in place but have a soft edge. There's a lot of flesh in this area. I can soften with a lighter uh, value of Opera Rose here. Kind of avoiding the lighter areas. Um, preparing the darks for the purple shadow that they will receive. The thing about teeth is you want to kind of understate them. They need to be understated. They're better, nicer understated. Uh, you don't want them to look wooden like George Washington teeth, so uh, it's best to understate them. So we've got our lip line in and I've softened it up toward the top and I don't have a hard edge and that's what I was um, looking for. And I want to go ahead and paint a little flesh in and around the mustache. Have to get the flesh in there and there's some light hairs so you paint around them and look for your lights and darks. If I get enough color, flesh color around the eyes then I can go ahead and put in the eyes. These glasses are kind of tinted so they're going to be darker in here so I need to darken the flesh around the eyes. Now after painting the eyes I can see that the right side of the nose needs to be a little darker. So using my number six I'm going to add some more flesh to the right side and as well as the right side of the nostril. Okay, we're going to stop there, put in some shadows when we come back.